In the modern age, we'd love to believe we have everything figured out. With science increasing our knowledge every day, it's an easy thing to buy into. But what if we told you the Earth is full of mysteries we just can't explain? From ancient technology that shouldn't exist to imperial tombs we can't enter, there's almost no end to the unknown. As science advances, perhaps we will uncover more of its secrets, but until then, we're pretty clueless. Here are some of the craziest, actually real things that seem to come straight from a movie. First, the Dropa Stones. In 1938, an expedition led by archaeologist Dr. Chi Pute into the Bayan Karaula in China made an astonishing discovery. Nearby caves held traces of the ancient culture which once occupied them. Buried under thick layers of dust, hundreds of stone discs lay scattered about the cave's interior. There seemed to be nothing spectacular initially, but the discs turned out to be eerily similar to phonograph records. Nine inches in diameter, a circle cut into their centers, and an obvious spiral groove. They are believed to be more than 10,000 years old, but the spiral, as it turns out, is composed of tiny hieroglyphics. When studied and translated, it was revealed that the discs tell the amazing story of spaceships that crashed into the mountains, piloted by people that call themselves the Dropa. At least that's what Sun Amnui, the Chinese researcher in charge of the Dropa Stones, concluded. While his announcement startled the world at first, he was subsequently ridiculed by most of the scientific community and went on a self-imposed exile in Japan. Russian researchers requested the discs for studying and China actually sent a few to Moscow. In the famous Soviet magazine Sputnik, Dr. Vacheslav Sesev describes an experiment where the discs were supposedly placed on a special turntable, whereby they were shown to vibrate or hum in an unusual rhythm as though an electric charge is passing through them. However, research wasn't continued, or at least it wasn't made public. As of today, there is no clear information where the Dropa stones are stored or what modern research has concluded on them. They remained one of the most mysterious artifacts in the world. Next, the Saqqara bird, an Egyptian plane. This device consists of a five and a half inch high clay vessel, inside which was a copper cylinder held in place by asphalt. Within the cylinder, archaeologists found an oxidized iron rod. In 1940, Wilhelm Koenig, the German director of the National Museum of Iraq, suggested that these could be galvanic cells, perhaps used for electroplating gold onto silver objects. Nobody has been able to prove him wrong, especially since it only needed to be filled with an acid or alkaline substance to produce an electric charge. The Baghdad battery wouldn't have been very effective as a battery, but there's a chance it could have worked. Elizabeth Stone, an archaeologist at Stony Brook University, says modern archaeologists do not believe the object was a battery and was instead simply a storage vessel. Third is unexplainable fossils and metal objects. Geology is a relatively new science. The progress and developments made through experiments are absolutely remarkable and have helped in many other fields. Still, there are some things yet to be explained, though the honeycomb pattern of the Palodictyon is already well known. We remain stumped as to the creation of such, and more questions are being raised. For example, a fossil of a human handprint was found in limestone estimated to be more than 110 million years old, a fossilized human finger with just as much, and apparently the discovery of a human footprint that possibly sported a sandal, which dates to more than 300 million years ago. These amazing fossilized imprints slash remains have left the scientific community scratching their collective heads, not to mention the 65 million year old semi-ovoid metallic tubes being dug out of France. The unusual block of coal discovered 124 years ago, which contained a metal cube that couldn't have formed naturally within the lump, and many more intriguing things. Fourth, the Piri Reese map. In 1929, a group of historians made what can only be described as an amazing discovery, written on the skin of a gazelle. After study and research, they found that it is a genuine map drawn in 1513 by Piri Reis, a well-documented admiral of the Turkish navy. He depicts Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, several islands, the Azores, Canary Islands, and the mythical island of Antilla, and even Antarctica, which was thought to be discovered more than 300 years later. The most puzzling thing is not that it shows we need to rethink the chronology for a number of explorations exploratory discoveries, but that it describes Antarctica's topography as not being masked by ice and in great detail. The last time that occurred was more than 6,000 years ago. Tell me then, how did a Turkish admiral from a half a millennium ago map a continent that's been covered by ice for the last 6,000 years? Next, the London Hammer, a tool older than history. In June 1936, or 1934 according to some accounts, Max Hahn and his wife Emma were on a walk when they noticed a rock with wood 
protruding from its core. They decided to take the oddity home and later cracked it open with a hammer and chisel. Ironically, what they found within seemed to be an archaic hammer of sorts. They turned it to a team of archaeologists who checked it, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated to the Ordovician more than 400 million years ago. There is some question regarding that dating though, but here's the kicker. According to initial measurements, the hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. Apparently, it's so old that a section of the handle has begun the transformation to coal. Creationists, of course, were all over this, and creationist Karl Baugh latched onto the hammer in the 80s, even using it as the basis of speculation of how the atmospheric quality of a pre-flood Earth could have encouraged the growth of giants. The hammer's head, made of more than 96% iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without an assist from technology. However, there is significant reason to question the initial dating, and just because the hammer was encased in old rocks doesn't mean that it itself is as old as the rocks. The only proposed explanation is that the highly soluble minerals in the ancient limestone may have formed a concretion around the object, thus making it seem that it's as old as the minerals themselves, but this has not been confirmed. In fact, radiocarbon is yet to be undertaken for the hammer itself, which brings a significant question mark for the date of the hammer. The hammer is now an exhibit in the so-called Creation Evidence Museum, which is also kind of unfortunate because the curators don't allow scientific tests on the London hammer. Sixth is the Antikythera Mechanism, a Greek ancient computer. The Antikythera Mechanism has been labeled the first mechanical computer. Found in a shipwreck off the Greek island of Antikythera, buried under 45 meters of water, it was designed to calculate astronomical positions. Consisting of a box with dials on the outside and a very complex assembly of gear wheels mounted within, it's about as complex as an 18th century top-notch clock. The level of sophistication used by the device has forced scientists to accept that their perceptions of ancient Greek engineering may be faulty. Nothing similar to this exists or is even mentioned in any known writings from the period of its creation. Based on the knowledge we do have, this mechanism shouldn't even exist. Judging by its amazing complexity, it seems fair to assume that the Antikythera has other predecessors, but none of them have been found, which makes it even more impressive. The complexity and workmanship did not appear again in Europe until the development of mechanical astronomical clocks in the 14th century. So, how did the ancient Greeks, with basically no technology available, manage to build such a complex calculator? Well, we don't know yet. Finally, we have Qin Shi Huang's tomb. In 1974, farmers in China's Shangxi province accidentally unearthed one of the biggest archaeological finds of the 20th century, the life-size terracotta army of Emperor Qin Shi Hung, 259 BC to 210 BC. The intricately carved figures aren't a mystery. Historians know that the clay army was created to defend China's first emperor in the afterlife. What isn't known, however, is where exactly the emperor is buried, or what treasures his burial chamber might contain. A pyramid-shaped mausoleum is located about a mile to the northeast of where the terracotta army was discovered. However, no one has actually entered the mausoleum that holds Qin Shi Huang's remains. The first emperor's final resting place is the most opulent tomb ever constructed in China, according to ancient documents describing its construction. An underground palace complete with a surrounding kingdom, the mausoleum is made up of a network of caves and even included a state-of-the-art drainage system. Whether archaeologists will ever have the technology they need to safely excavate the tomb, which also happens to contain extremely high levels of mercury, remains a mystery, as do the many treasures that lay inside. Unfortunately guys, that's all the time we had for today. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. Make sure you like and follow for more great content.